Five Columbia University students and graduates filed a class action lawsuit this week against organizers of the anti-Israel protest that shut down the campus at the end of the spring semester. The suit also lists some lawmakers for defending those protests. Two similar cases at Harvard and MIT have already been tested. One judge ruling the Harvard lawsuit can proceed, but another shut down the one brought against MIT. Fox News has reached out to the defendants in the Columbia case for comment, and we have yet to hear back. Meantime, lead counsel in the Columbia suit, Daniel Sir, joins me now. So, Daniel, first of all, who are, who are the organizers and what's the legal complaint against them? Yeah, this really starts with Students for Justice in Palestine. It's a radicalized organization with networks nationwide. The fact that these happened on campuses across the country at the same time isn't an accident, uh, but really it goes to a larger network of left-wing agitators, of uh, people in Congress, in the unions, that this was a coordinated effort to highlight this issue, but in doing so, they shut down Columbia University, and my clients and tens of thousands of other students paid tuition for an education they didn't receive. That's a result of the illegal acts of these left-wing agitators, and so we're suing to get compensation and hopefully to deter this from happening again in the future. So you said if you win the lawsuit, the students will get compensation. Do we have an idea of what you're suing for? Can you tell us how much? Yeah, this is going to be a, a tens of millions of dollars in damages here if you think about every student at Columbia, because every student at Columbia paid for a full education. That's not what they got. They paid for a commencement. Every member of the class of 2024 was denied that commencement ceremony because of the security risk and the unsafe environment that was created by these on-campus agitators. Let's uh, take a look, Daniel, at a scrolling list of anti-Israel uh, protests at all of the top 50 universities. Um, you know, I, when we're talking about what's at stake with this lawsuit, what is at stake in terms of precedent? Yeah, this is hugely important, not just for Columbia, but I think for every university across the country. When school goes back in just a couple of weeks, we're going to see another surge in activism. And the question is simple. Are the activists going to follow the rules and follow the law? And are universities going to ensure that anti-Semitic behavior has no place on their campus, that hate speech has no place on their campus? We've already seen at Columbia what can happen when these things get out of control, when the students take over. And that's not what we want at any of these top universities or really any of the schools our kids are paying so much. They deserve a good education. That's what the schools should be providing. And uh, we shouldn't tolerate illegal activity by some student activists. Um, are you working with the universities to keep these agitators off campus? Are you working on that end as well? Yeah, so the universities have a separate legal obligation under a federal law known as Title VI that requires them to ensure that their students have a safe learning environment, that they're not discriminated against based on race or religion. And so that I think there are serious concerns from the university side that uh, they need to ensure there's no anti-Semitic behavior or hate speech happening on their campuses. But the real foundation for that is that we shouldn't have student activists breaking the rules, taking over campus, taking over buildings, taking janitors hostage, shutting down schools in the first place. Those are the people that we sued because ultimately they're the ones who broke the rules. They're the ones who broke the law and they need to be held accountable. And if those students, if you're you know, suing students, if they don't have money, would their parents have to pay? Well, I think there is a, a large nationwide network that is behind these student organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, we have sued not Got only it. the student groups, but the faculty who yeah. enabled this the faculty unions and who some the ones lawmakers, out there. You'll remember some the visual lawmakers image as well. Of, yeah, and some tell lawmakers me about the as well. Lawmakers. That's right. Three members of the so called squad actually showed up on campus, illegally trespassed onto Columbia's campus, and were encouraging the students to continue in their illegal behavior. Well, you can't do that. When you encourage people to break the law, we call that incitement. It's not protected by the First Amendment. And in fact, you can be legally liable, as I think these lawmakers will be for inciting other people 
to, to break the law. You can't do that. The First Amendment doesn't protect that. Incitement is not protected by the First Amendment. Daniel Sir, thank you very much. Keep us posted, would, posted, would you? Yeah, thanks so much for being interested in the case. Absolutely. Okay, take care. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.